continues to take a backseat as we delve more into Eugene's exploration of his intentions. While he outwardly claims to be an American soldier, he finds himself sympathizing with the Jose on people. His curiosity about the powerless Jose on people, some blissfully frivolous like He Sung and others who are fiercely loyal like Eshin, seems to drive some of his indecision about whose side he's on, whether he's either a traitor or a patriot, and how he defines his loyalties. Episode 5 Recap He Sung, the son of wealthiest noble family in Joseon, arrives at noblewoman Eshin's house and expresses his regret for not arriving sooner, implying that he admires Eshin's beauty. He offers his fiancée his prepared flowers, but Eshin doesn't take them and simply stares at him with a straight face. He wonders if it's the flowers or him that she doesn't like. Meanwhile, at He Sung's home, Jose on American naval officer Eugene seeks revenge on the family that killed his parents. Pointing the gun at He Sung's father, Eugene demands to know where his parents were buried, but the nobleman admits that he has no idea because all slaves were buried together. Eugene threatens to ruin the nobleman's family if they don't recover his parents' bodies and tells them to notify the U.S. Embassy if they do. The nobleman and his wife are confused why they would inform the U.S. Embassy, so Eugene introduces himself as an American naval officer. Then he lowers his gun and walks out of the house. Back at Eshin's house, he son apologizes for being so late. Eshin accuses him of arriving unannounced after 10 years, and tells him to set another time to return because grandfather is away paying his respects to their ancestors. He Sung asks if Eshin will be less angry if he returns at a better time, but Eshin isn't so easily assuaged. She claims that she's not angry, rather, she's surprised that He Sung is exactly as she'd imagined, pale, soft, and weak. He Sung takes Eshin's insults lightly and laughs. He admits that Eshin was nothing like he'd imagined and says that she's like a flower. With a sincere look, he offers her the flowers again, and Eshin stares back, still doubtful. A servant timidly reports to Dongmei about He Sung's return from Japan and his visit to Eshin's house. Dongmei offers him a generous payment for this intel, and the servant thanks him profusely, promising to report more news to Dongmei. Ticked off by this news, Dongmei looks more irritated than usual as he makes his evening rounds in his territory. A clueless Japanese man doesn't actively avoid Dongmei and his posse as they walk by, and Dongmei lets out his anger on this innocent man by beating him to the ground. His right-hand man, Yujo, stops Dongmei from going any further and offers to take care of the situation. Dongmei insists that he was angered by the underdressed Japanese man defaming the reputation of the Japanese Empire, but it sounds like Dongmei's convincing himself that this burst of anger had nothing to do with Eshin's fiance. The prominent ceramist, Yun San, offers a porcelain piece to the Japanese siding foreign affairs minister and claims that he's the first to receive the coveted porcelain among all those begging for pieces. The minister throws him a bar of gold as payment, and Yun San thanks him for the recognition. As Yun San leaves with his apprentice, we find out that the porcelain was actually the work of the apprentice. While the apprentice trembles in fear of getting exposed, Yun San celebrates his apprentice's talent and suggests that they treat themselves to a meal. As they walk, Yun San recognizes Eugene on horseback and thinks back to their mysterious interaction back at this home, where Eugene seemed to treat him with an eerie familiarity. Eugene's friend and superior, Kyle, is waiting for him when he returns to his office and asks if he got his revenge. Eugene looks accusingly at Guan Su, who admits that he revealed Eugene's schedule to Kyle because he was so insistent. Kyle breaths a sigh of relief when Eugene implies that he didn't kill the nobles, and Eugene admits that he's unsure of what he'll bestow on his enemies. Guan Su mentions that Kyle wasn't the only person asking for Eugene's schedule, and Eugene comes face to face with the young boy he saved from the Japanese soldiers. The boy wants to repay him for his help and offers to do anything. This situation reminds Eugene of his youth, when he begged the American man to let him repay his debt. He realizes now how uncomfortable and conflicted the man must have felt, and he rejects the boy's offer. From around the corner, Yun San watches this interaction. At the archery range, Eshin's aunt expertly shoots her arrow at the target, and her sister-in-law compliments her all-encompassing talent. But that comment becomes backhanded when the sister-in-law says the exception to aunt's talent is her lack of a son to inherit grandpa's wealth. Sister-in-law suggests that aunt adopt a son so that all the inheritance doesn't default to the family's son-in-laws, but aunt isn't too keen on this suggestion. 
After nailing another arrow in the bull's eye, Aunt says that she'll follow grandfather's wishes, and if they choose to adopt a son to inherit the family's wealth, she has no intention of adopting any of sister-in-law's children. They wonder why he sung's mother is missing from their regular archery meeting, and Aunt assumes that she's probably too ashamed to show her face after he sung only just returned after 10 years away from his fiancée. But he sung's mother's absence is due to the shock of being confronted by the revenge-seeking Eugene. Her husband curses the modernization of Jose on for allowing such lowly people to dare to point a gun at nobles. Realizing the full extent of Eugene's threat on their family, He Sung's mother decides to send a telegram to He Sung, whom she still believes is in Japan. She wants him to stay clear of Jose on until they get rid of Eugene, and she rushes out to send this urgent message. But as we know, He Sung is already in Jose on and gambles at Glory Hotel in a game of Go Stop with Air Soon, Air Shin's cousin, and her gambling friends. Erdun confidently puts in all her money in the pot, but her impressive hand is just barely beaten, this time by Hee Sung. He happily divides the riches among all the women, though Er soon still looks distraught by her losses. Er Shin paces in her room while her maid expresses approval of Hee Sung, saying that he's handsome and even brought flowers. But Er Shin finds this unsatisfactory, he only brought her mere flowers. Eshin practices shooting at her hideout and thinks about He Sung's comment about her being like a flower. Instead of being flattered, Eshin considers this the reason to break of her engagement. Eugene rides through the forest on his horse, and we see haunting contrast of his childhood self running for his life and grown Eugene riding comfortably on horseback. He visits Ignobleman's old home, where he lived and served with his parents. He remembers a moment with his mother, and in a flashback, we watch a conversation between them. His mother stared at a flower and told Eugene that she would like to be reincarnated as a flower in a grand home that he would live in. Eugene reminisces while watching this barren house from above. Dong Mei continues to seethe with anger in response to Er Shin's fiancé returning to Jose on. He practices martial arts with his lackeys, which is basically just him aggressively throwing them on the ground. Right-hand man Yujo stops him before he gets carried away, but his anger doesn't look fully managed yet. He Sung happily strolls through the town, greeting the local people and flirting with women. He sees a woman who looks vaguely familiar, and he suddenly realizes it's his mother. Surprised and scared to see He Sung in Hoseon, his mother scolds him for being out of touch, and they head to Glory Hotel to discuss matters. He Sung's mother tells him to stay away from their home and be anonymous. Q, two ladies walking by their table and greeting He Sung by name. It's clearly too late for that. She scolds him and chases him up the stairs as He Sung flees to his room. Er Shin stares at He Sung's flowers in her room and grabs them to throw out. But before she can, she's summoned outside by her servants. She goes outside to find a carriage and a messenger from Glory Hotel delivering a love letter from He Sung. He writes his invitation to Glory Hotel in flowery language, and Er Shin looks offended by this supposed romantic gesture. At Glory Hotel, Er Shin confronts He Sung about this offensive gesture of inviting her to this hotel, and He Sung explains that this is how courtship looks like in Tokyo. Er Shin reminds him that they're in Hoseon's, and she expresses her dis-